Hey everybody, welcome to Public Access America's Just, Just a, a tip. 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 Hey, try writing your hashtags using camel case. Capitalizing the first letter of every word makes it easier for people to see every word instead of for having to have them find the words inside of the phrase. For example, instead of writing all lowercase made by humans, write capital made capital by capital humans. If the words of a hashtag are written in camel case, screen readers, they'll be able to read each word. If not, the screen reader will simply read out all of the letters in that phrase. Your followers will get confused and it will be not accessible. Interesting. That's my tip. What's yours? It is time now something positive we might be headed to the promised land the of promised speaking land, the truth land, and finding land. our external liberty once we internally liberate ourselves the problem can only be solved when there is a kind of coalition of conscience of conscience because conscience. that is how it works this is the beginning it is not the finale and that's why we're here and that's why we rally 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 rally, rally. We've got to be that creative minority. Creative minority. Creative minority. Find a way to get in the way. I got in trouble. It was good trouble. It was necessary trouble. Frankly, I know we've got to do something. Do something. And we're back. And we were talking about Trump being an idiot. And what I was, what that immediately made me think of was the less Trumpian idiot version, Elon Musk, who is now a majority stakeholder, shareholder in Twitter. And he's on the board, one of 12 people. And I thought to myself, why the fuck didn't Trump invest in Twitter? <laughs> if it was that easy for Elon to do it. Why couldn't Trump, who's so much smarter and richer, do it and get oh, back on Twitter, you know? Right. You know, and that's the other thing, too, is it's like fucking, you know, I mean, number one, Elon's got fuck you money, number one. So mm -hmm. he can do pretty much whatever the fuck he wants. But it was less important to him. It was more important for Trump. So he should have devoted more resources to it, you know? And the thing about like all of these different quote unquote free speech platforms that have come out, it's like all you had to do was read the fine print and there were things you found out there were things yeah. that you couldn't talk about. So which is it? Is it free speech or is it, you know, free speech as long as you talk about these things, which that's not free speech. And, right. and, and that goes back to the whole concept of people don't understand what the constitution means by free speech. You know, I've got people who are, you know, they're originalists and they swear up and down. They know the constitution. It's like, okay, well then you would understand that what fr you know freedom of speech means is that the government cannot control what you say, what you consume, all that other fun stuff. Right. Like, karma does. Yeah. It's karma <laughs> or, you know, the fact that, you know, if they're, spreading bullshit they're going to get shut down and that's just right, the reality don't, of it. don't make fun of a guy's a guy's wife's hair fucking you get knocked out you know what i mean uh, or a good slap i don't know will smith fucking funny it looked like such a fake phony slap to me that i was like it wasn't real the way he just i was like i don't know maybe he's tall because you know chris rock is short just kind of it kind of it was kind of weird to me it was a weird so, yeah that's, i don't even want to dive into so, that it's, I don't know why I tangented. I really liked where we were going. Why did I jump onto Will Smith? Ugh. Fuck. Take the opportunities you want to take. So free speech is something that the people hold each other accountable for. It's not something the government is there to do, you know? Right. The The government's job is to not get involved in speech. Like that's, that's right. legitimately the way that if you interpret the constitution, the government's job is not to get involved in limiting speech. And then I would argue that in a lot of ways, it's the government's job not to get involved in a lot of things. I mean, that's just personal belief, but right. that's where this whole issue of, you know, what tech platforms do comes into question because there are, there are significant questions about <laughs> who can be held liable for what, you know, for example, yeah. you know, you know, through rulings in the courts, we've understood that, you know, free speech does have its limits you cannot call for violence 
And that is a significant limit. And so then the question has been posed recently on social media is, is, are they responsible when somebody calls for violence on social media and they don't shut it down immediately? And Mm -hmm. as somebody who works in tech, you know, in any number of different roles, like one of the things that people have to keep in mind is, is that, you know, there isn't a person that's just dedicated to reading your Facebook post. That's right. To make sure that if you called for violence, that person can go, "Mm, nope, click. I'm going to shut that down. Yeah. There's a number of bots out there. Twitter isn't a globally large entity. It's like what? Hundreds of people. (laughs) You know what I mean? It's, it's thousands, but it's not, it's not something that, you know, you've got, you know, one person per one person reading lines to make sure that if somebody calls for violence, then somebody is immediately shutting it down. Even the the report and block is are for, well, that's what report and block is for. And that's what there's any number of bots that are crawling that, you know, Twitter has made that's crawling through. They're trying to understand and assess and they get it wrong a lot. They really do. Case in point, shout out to a dog uh adam so he put up a post oh god this was this was last year sometime where you know he put up something funny that said hey guys i'm gonna start selling nudes now five dollars to get one twenty five dollars not to and it's fucking hilarious and so i commented on the post saying so if i pay you twenty five dollars and don't say anything how many nudes do i get and I got fucking banned for, for quote unquote, you know, soliciting sex. Oh, uh, you got, you got, even wow. though like if anybody understands the context of what was happening, oh, sure. it's a fucking joke and it's all really funny. Unless Adam actually does make good and send me those fucking nudes, you dick. <laughs> it's it's kind of gross. They're kind of close up. And he right. doesn't care about skincare maintenance down there. I'll just say that. And I can't, I, he, they don't stop. It's like every week. Come on, Adam, another close up. Stop it. But now Twitter, what they do is cause it's happened to me. I'll, I'll go to tweet something and they'll be like, are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> There's a little thing that actually not all the time, but if you use key phrases or words or something, Are you sure you want to it'll be that? like, you sure you want to post that? And, so it's it saved me about four or five times i mean personally i would be like oh you look like you're going on an all it's like clippy you look like you're about to go on an all cats rat do you want to post this unjustified bullshit no clippy i don't you're (laughs) right thanks for calling me out but that's funny but you know it's it's one of those things like robots are not taught context they're not taught any number Mm -hmm. of things but uh let's see here there was another one uh there was another one that I got banned for, for 30 days. And it was a, the joke was, uh, you know, something about, you know, the person, the person that does the most damage to you is yourself or something like that. Some, some supposed motivational quote, uh, and I, or something like that. And I went, I I commented, I know that person, that person's me and I'll fucking kill him. (laughs) And oh yeah, there you go. And and I got banned for 30 days for, you know, what is uh, you know, clearly a joke about, you know, how, you know, how that whole, you know, I know who that is and I'll fucking kill him, you know, but what's right. you know, it's referring me. to myself. <laughs> And, and uh, just immediately 30 day ban. And of course, you yeah. know, but the funny thing is, is, is that, you know, I got a 30 day ban, but I took a screenshot of it and you can post the screenshot of it and it's like perfectly acceptable. So as long as you take it and post it in a picture, apparently it's all good. But if you actually type it right. out and so but then audio describe it, I mean, not audio, but then put a little text description underneath it of what it says and then get banned again. Yeah, exactly. So I, I, I've seen pictures of genitals. I have seen things on Twitter that I don't think I should have to see on Twitter. But again, I go by it because somebody explained it. You know, Twitter is just a couple guys. It's it's just a couple guys running a, 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 a platform. Like it wasn't designed to be like the um, censorship of free, free speech. It wasn't meant to be a determination of that. If you don't like it, leave it. If you don't like what they're saying, block it. If you think it's offensive and dangerous, report it. Otherwise, ignore it. Yeah. Yeah. That's I, I think that's how I treat Twitter. Like there's times I'll th- I'll see things and I'll be like, 
that's stupid. Uh, I want to comment, but I'm not going to because it's just that stupid. Yeah. And then I'll get more of it because what Twitter does is you comment on it. It shows you more from that person, Mm -hmm. you know, and I'm just I so I learned from David Hogue, by the way, just to ignore it because if it frustrates you, they give you more of it. Yeah. And that's the thing is, is like all of these Mm -hmm. platforms, they 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 look at your engagement and that's the content that they feed. Yeah. And so, and so if you're busy fighting conspiracy theories on the right, you're going to end up getting a lot of that content. And I tested that Uh theory and yes. And guess what? You know, I ended up getting, you know, seeing more people who posted that kind of shit that were friends. I saw more Uh of their content, but then I also started getting more of the ads for stuff like that, like the daily and Ben Shapiro and all of that. And it's like, and it's like, you know, but I also, you know, if I engaged with people on the left, I started getting socialist stuff. And it's like, God damn it. I don't want yeah, any of this crap. Yeah. You know what I noticed was that people that are on the right have a vast variety of beliefs. Like somebody could believe in not vaccinating, not because it's a propaganda thing, but for a different reason entirely that has nothing to do with politics. Mm-hmm. But still you know, side with those politics. Like we got to stop lumping every anti-vaxxer as a radical. Like, yeah, we're not all, they're not all Ben Shapiro's, right? They're not all Devin Nunes's. A lot of them are just normal people. They're like, I don't give a fuck. I'm not listening to this guy. I'm not listening to Lindsey Graham to form my opinion. I'm just on the same team he is, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's, and that's where just like, it always gets yeah. tough, you know, because there are plenty of people on the right who do believe in vaccinating. You know, there's yep. a lot of them that are just, you know, their their standpoint is is that, you know, it's none of your business whether I got vaccinated or not. And, you know, damn well that they did, and that's just it. Is yeah. like the uh, there's just the idea that you know I shouldn't have to disclose things to you that I don't want to disclose to you. That's right. And I, I asked somebody a question. I asked somebody a question. If, if I'm not going to be in the room, like with you having sex, why do I need to know your sexual orientation? Like, it's okay to be proud of it and shout it out. I like that. Do it if you want to, but I don't need to know your sexual orientation to be your friend or not, you know? Well, and that's, and I think, you know, context is different there. It's like, you know, needing, you know, deciding to be friends with somebody based on sexual orientation. Well, that's up to an individual person, but knowing a person's sexual orientation, because we're going to have the conversation about what rights they are having taken away, I'd say is important Mm. and understanding the fact that, yeah, to advocate. That's exactly. And so I'm very much the kind of person that I believe in, in sharing what you want to share and feel comfortable with sharing. And the reality is, is I don't believe that anybody has any sort of inherent um, oh, what's the I, word I can't forward? think of the word you're like, I know, you know it, uh, I do, I do, uh, yeah, uh, they don't have, they the, don't have uh, any sort of inherent requirement to share things with me. There are certain things where, okay. where I will make determinations, you know, at the height, you know, at the height of Omicron, you know, when, when people were getting sick, really easily you know whether or not a person was vaccinated is kind of an important thing because i mean number one the idea that the the idea that the vaccine is going to prevent you from getting it number two that it's going to prevent you from spreading it is totally false and we know that it's there's a great chance that if you you know there's a good chance that you'll get it and be asymptomatic which is great But Mm -hmm. there's also, a you know, there's, there's less of a chance that you're going to spread it as compared to people who aren't vaxxed. And the thing is, is like, you know, I wanted to make sure that I did good by, you know, people at home because number one, we had just, you know, most of us had just gotten boosted, you know? And so we're literally just like playing waiting game to make sure that we're, you know, hitting full antibody levels before, you know, making adjustments and adjudications. But number two, you know, there are people who, you know, I understand the need and the desire to want to know, but I also understand the need and the desire to just be like, you know what, the person's a good person, whether or not they get vaccinated or not. The problem I have is um, the indoctrination issue of it. So, for example, like there were things that kids were saying 
um, that I'm like, yeah, that's cut and paste from something, you know, your parents told you that's, that's clear. Like, you that's know, all kids say, I mean, we might not know where they're getting it from, but everything they say is copy paste. So, something else. so like, uh, there was, you know, there was an issue with, you know, a couple of the kids that my kids were hanging out with got sick with COVID. One mm-hmm. of them was like, no, I'm not vaccinated. My parents don't believe in it and they won't let me get vaccinated. And another was, and then, and it's like, well, that fucking sucks. And I wish that you didn't have to deal with that. But then you had another kid who basically word for word said, you know, I have no obligation to tell you my vaccination status. And it's like, okay, well that right there, I'm going to sit down and go with, uh, then I have to make a, I have to make a choice based on myself. It's like, you know, it's like, it's great. You absolutely do not have to disclose that to me, but I also have no obligation to hang around you if, unless I know that I'm going to be safe. And that's right. You know, and, and that's just the way that it is. And people think that, oh, well, this just absolves me of, you know, if, if I, if they don't ask, then everything's okay. Or if I do ask and they give me and mm-hmm. you know, and I tell them I don't have to disclose it. Well, then they have to hang out with me. They have to be around me. No, right. you, you don't have you to have be to around accept anybody. me for who I am, no matter what. No, I don't being being me is the price of admission. You have to accept. And the answer is no, I fucking don't. No, you don't. No, that's like, what I think the Karens and Chads of the world don't understand. You get to be who you want. I also get to choose what I want in my life. Yep. And that's just it. It's like, you're free to be you and I'm free to be me. Mm-hmm. And, and, and and at this point in our decision-making tree, this is where our paths diverge, period, yeah. end of story. <laughs> yeah. Let it, it'll, it'll shake out. What I think is if you're in the Ural mountains and you never see another soul, you haven't seen another person in 10 years, you might not want to get vaccinated because it doesn't really matter to you. But if you come in contact with people, I think you have an obligation to protect them and they have an obligation to protect you from the basics. And the more people you see, the more obligation there is like, it's up to you to isolate or not. It's not up to people to not see be around you right right like they're forced to be around you you have the choice to not be around them Mm -hmm. so protect them because you're making the uh, it's weird but i just think that you should i don't know we should all just be in suits to protect ourselves you know what i mean if you wanted to never hazmat suits, if you never wanted yeah. to get sick or be exposed to anything i mean it's allergy season here get, yeah it, it's allergy season here so like sometimes i'm like that would be really nice have mm-hmm. pressurized air that is completely free and clear that would probably yeah. feel great but that's come on not- baby fat give us a new hazmat suit a stylish hazmat suit with bunny ears or something you know what i mean a hood with a mask you could just slip her off a onesie a onesie with a mask i like this oh god so it's it's one of those things like that's all to say it's like everybody gets the chance to be who they are but you Mm -hmm. but when you do that you have to accept the fact that nobody else is under any obligation to stay around you and that's right i and that's the thing is it's like i don't i wouldn't even use the word accept because that's it's not your job to accept a person they are who they are whether you they are, are who they are whether you accept it or not it doesn't fucking matter they're going to be who they right. are your your choice in the matter is whether or not you choose to be around them and that's all there is to it right and that's why it's like you fucking you do you and you know if if i want to hang out with you cool and if i don't want to hang out with you cool if you want to hang out with me cool if you don't want to hang out with me cool it's like right. it is what it is you, you can't you can't sit down and just reject people because you don't like it. What mm-hmm. you, and, and, and some will sit down and go, well, you're rejecting them. If you're saying you don't want to hang out with them. No, I'm, I'm assessing my risks to myself. I'm except I'm ex- uh, assessing what I am willing to be around. And mm-hmm. if you have toxic traits, you know, cause here's the thing. There are people out there that don't want to get vaccinated because well, they can't. And, mm-hmm. I still want to hang around them if they want to hang around me. So the idea that it's that, you know, I don't want to hang around anybody who doesn't get vaccinated. That's not the answer at all. It's right. You know, the people, you know, there are people that I don't want to hang around because their adjudication of the value of life is very skewed by their media sources. It's like, look, 
you know, in the early days, I was very accepting of people, you know, going, you know what, I'm going to hold off on getting vaccinated because, you know, it's a newer vaccine type. There's a lot of questions that were out there to be had. And I think those were a lot of fair questions. I even waited a little bit. Yeah. And waiting until the propaganda dies down Mm -hmm. and, you know, sometimes that's the way to go. You wait till all the, the media forgets about it. And then you're just asking your doctor and it's a lot easier, you know? Right. And and that's the thing is, is that, you know, even at this point now, like you're going to have people who've had COVID who either do or don't know about it. I mean, the reality is, is that if you, if you haven't gotten vaccinated and you're not sure whether or not you've had COVID, you can actually go get a blood test done to find out whether or not you've got the antibodies for having COVID. And that'll nice. tell you, and that'll tell you whether or not, you know, you've, you actually had it, been exposed to it, whatever, you know, maybe yeah. you, maybe you just got like a, you know, what you thought was a real mild cold. You didn't even get like the heavy duty symptoms, like the loss of taste and smell. Maybe you got it and you never knew it, you know, that's great. (laughs) And whether or not you want to get, you know, yearly boosters in order to make sure you maintain protection, that's going to be entirely up to you. For me, it's for me, I'm going to do it simply because number one, my lungs are trash. And number two, you know, it, it's going to help me. It's going to help my health in the long run because I'm going to be less likely to end up in a hospital because my lungs are shit. Yeah, but but when I when I think about the flu vaccine, mm-hmm. I never I never got that every year. I did because it la- it lasted three years for me. But I noticed like the fourth year I would get the flu, so then I just learned to take it every three years. You know because I don't know for me that worked, and I think with everybody this is going to work out in a in a different way. I just think absolutely, so. and I, and I think too that you know what you're going and to it's see. gonna it's gonna be a part of a multi vaccine you get once a year. Kids for are gonna flu, get it, adults RSV are gonna get and, it. And yeah, COVID. yeah. And I think it's great. On top of that, now we got so many tools like like HPV. Paxlovid, and we've got oh, oh, HPV is not a tool. That's definitely you get, no, you get HPV think we can, from the tool. We can. Va- I mean, it's just part of a multi-vaccine. You know what I mean? <laughs> the things you can throw in to vaccinate against. Oh, HPV isn't a tool. No, <laughs> no, nope. nope, nope. But but like thanks to yeah. yeah, thanks to you know the money that got dumped into COVID, we're going to see a lot of vaccines for things that yeah. you know we never we hoped we would be able to vaccinate against, but never had the opportunity uh-huh. to. And that's to me that's fantastic. You know, it, you know yeah. we've got we're testing malaria vaccines, we're testing HIV vaccines, we're te- we're we're testing leukemia mm-hmm. vaccines. We're Pickle we're testing being cured because of this we're, packaging. We're testing new vaccines for the flu because the yeah. vaccines themselves are mm, ish. Because now we better know how viruses work because the entire planet got one, Right. you know? So now it's like flu was so hard because people would report symptoms, but the symptoms were often the virus trying to get into somebody else and not infecting us. So it's really hard to get that data. But now we had a data of everyone getting infected by a virus and the flu is a form of a virus. So it yep. might help. But I think... The people that are so concerned about these vaccines are going to get an alphabet vaccine and not even realize they just got vaccinated for COVID in their yearly vaccination, you know, or, you know, you know, or they're what's going to end up happening is they're going to see a bunch of people who got these ABC vaccines and they're going to watch as they, you know, really don't get sick all that often anymore. Right. And they're going to be like, right. well, how the fuck are you doing then? It's like, oh, I just go and get this vaccine, you know, bef- you know, in yeah. September before the start of the flu season. And then they're right. like, well, what the fuck? That's not fair. And then, you know, it's like, well, here's your option. It's probably like a $30 shot and, yeah. you know, that your insurance will take care of. Why? Because you know, paying $30 for a shot is a hell of a lot cheaper than, yeah. you know, any number of hospital bills that you can get from having pneumonia. And every student gets it. Every military personnel gets it. Every government official gets it. You know, like companies are recommending it. So, oh, yeah. Know. Like, you know, you got companies who will live, you know, there were, there were, uh, I mean, I saw stuff where companies would literally give you a paid day off if you went and got a flu vaccine at one point. Like I remember right. seeing that. It was like, oh cool. So I can get an extra day off because I went and, mm-hmm. you know, stood in line for 10 minutes and got a poke in the arm that my insurance this, paid for. The COVID vaccine just got a bad rap because it got it got so politicized for some weird reason. And that's fine, but like that'll die down. And when we get the ABC vaccine, then people will not even realize that they're just 
getting taken care of. I don't know. It's, it's weird to me. And a lot of people won't get vaccines either, you know, Mm -hmm. but you can't, I don't know this. What you said is true. A company will pay you to get vaccinated. You know what I mean? And that's, I, mean, I think that's cool. And that's, that's I don't and know. to me that's and that's you know, to me that's fantastic. You know, in in that you've got this you've got this ability to number one protect your health, but number two you get rewarded for doing that. That's like because why? Yeah. You know, well, why why are people getting rewarded for taking a day off if you know for getting vaccinated? Answer because they're not taking three days off because they're sick. Yeah, right. And then, you know, and then have a week's worth of, you know, lesser production because their body's still healing. So Uh, they get an extra day to just straight up enjoy versus you being down and miserable for three days and then, you know, trying to get better for a week afterwards. Right. So I don't know. For a long time, people didn't give a fuck about vaccines. We were all getting our vaccines all the time. It was just normal. And then, One day it was vaccines might be bad. And we were all like, wait, why? Well, there's this one paper from 40 years ago that everyone has disputed and disproved, but it's still out there. We want to reevaluate it. And then then, we don't, we don't have any scientific like knowledge. We're going to just evaluate it as ignorant people (laughs) (laughs) and not listen to the people that know what it says. And then then it's like, oh, but then there's these random, you know, sites that are talking about how, you know, the vaccine not only renders, you know, women infertile, but it, you know, implants communism in your brain. And it's like, what the fuck are you (laughs) on? My favorite was the microchip. Give me my phone. I'm out of here. <laughs> Seriously, like my, like I hate to say it, but my uh, my five G still sucks. <laughs> <laughs> right. Fucking three doses of this shit, and it's still not working. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and that's the thing. I like that. <laughs> Two shots and a booster, and I'm still not getting fox through my teeth. <laughs> right. It's like what the fuck. Like, like some of like this stuff isn't real and people don't, you know, there's people out there that are just absolutely adamant that, you know, that somehow we've figured out how to put propaganda into a vaccine and inject that into people. Yeah. Right. This little fucking device right here. Yeah. This one, you know, this one that absolutely <laughs> you carry with you all the time, this new version of the fucking idiot box. That, you mean that thing that counts how many steps you take, <laughs> how many stairs you climb and if you how your heart is beating <laughs> and if you have the apple watch it'll let you know how many times you're beating your dick per second yeah yeah i know i know well, no i don't have the apple watch sorry <laughs> no although it's amazing here's to my me just that every... tip here's my just the tip for the week Ooh. if you have a kid that has an apple watch don't connect uh that apple watch to your phone because <laughs> a friend of mine found out that their kid was exercising vigorously at 10 30 at night and i went oh no don't do it don't go in there <laughs> oh my god go in there go in there whap, 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 whap. <laughs> but how do you not give him a thumbs up in the morning you know what i mean congratulations take your watch off next time because your phone ratted oh, you man. out for beating your dick in bed my my just the tip would be if you want to beat your meat go ahead and beat your meat it's your meat to beat and if you want to beat it go ahead and do it beat it like it owes you money right (laughs) of course i always tell kids like teenagers i always say you know i masturbated a lot and that's why my penis is like the shape of a noodle you know so maybe don't grip as hard looks (laughs) the penis looks like that that moment in harry potter where dobby gets (laughs) choked and stretched out i don't know never saw harry potter so it's too too uh too weird for me but yeah, everybody sat down and they thought that somehow we had mastered the art of tracking to the point where yeah. we could literally yeah. inject it into people. And we do have tracking that gets injected into cattle, but it's literally like a radio chip. And it's like, you were here. You were here. Right. Here, you right. know, we've actually created this urge that you have to like have this thing with you all the time. Mm-hmm. And that thing does that. Like, and you pay for it monthly right so like right and And then you add little apps that track you even 
easier mm -hmm. and in more detail. You put Facebook on it and Facebook tracks you in a very unique way that the government never could, exactly. but the government can access the public information that Facebook is gathering. And so can right. Google. You yeah. know? So people tend to like, like that's where it's like, holy shit. You guys are like yeah. somehow like think you're living in sci-fi future, but you're like 15 years behind the curve on this one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's, there's so much more that your phone can do. Um, then, <laughs> then yeah. what you think is possible through whatever possible injection, like, Honestly, like if, you know, if uh Neuralink, Elon Musk's project, uh, you know, really works out and you could actually, Bro. you could actually get information from people's brains that way. You do not want the information that's in my brain. This program is brought to you by paper. Tutors for all. The last couple of years haven't been easy for students. Kids are struggling. Schools and families are too. But what if there are new ways to help? What if tutoring was part of every student's experience? What if it was available 24-7 and free? When schools choose paper, students get free 24-7 access to tutors. And if you're listening to this right now, there's a good chance your child's school already has paper or will be adding it very soon. Visit paper.co and find out more. So is this the line for Dragon's Maze? Wow, the line is really long. Mommy, we'll meet up later. How long will you wait? As long as it takes. So you guys are only going to do this one ride all day? It won't be that long, probably. Mom, can you get us food? But wait, are they cutting? Caleb, food is so far away. Should I say something? Daddy, pick me up. Mom! Hey, there's a line here. Daddy, swing me. That's like 20 people. Oh one person holds the line for 20 people? This is bull... Don't go there. Go on a real vacation. Go RVing. Learn more at GoRVing.com. Oh, God, mine would be an absolute horror movie for most people. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking about this, like you and, and the 1.8 million unique subscribers we have, you guys know the real me. Unfortunately, people in real life or that I meet online outside of this, they're, they're subject to little tests I have. And that's a shame, but you know, like I'll let one little story go and see where it goes in my atmosphere of friends, you know, but not here. You could ask me anything and I'll be pretty honest because I'm held accountable because I recorded it. You know, I can't, right. I can't deny it. That's the other thing. Stop having witnesses to your fucking dysfunction. If you do it in isolation, no one can prove it. But if there's somewhere there to prove it, you're going to get in trouble for it. You know? Well, and that's where like all of this is just like, it's, it's all so yeah. interesting and, and it's all so weird and, and bizarre in, in how we've, we've become so dependent on this on this technology and then somehow yeah. we come up with theories on how it works that aren't based in any sort of reality at all right but then we have all this technology that we think salt sugar inert covid and oil is something more than it is you know like these four ingredients contained in the vaccine is something mind controlling bill gates lizard people baby eating propaganda when it's just kind of not <laughs> kind of i mean kind of like kind of well i believe nine 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 percent not what what's that what's that um thing that happens when you give someone a sugar pill and tell them it's ecstasy Right. I believe there's a certain placebo effect in something. So where if you're told there's a microchip in it, you might hear radio signals. If you if you've been battered that into your head, you might believe it. There might be a placebo effect. But this the reality is is the suitcase, the MNR and M, what we put it in, the distribution system is 10 years old. So there's been a lot of studies on that. And then all we needed to do was put the inert virus in it. So there didn't need to be a lot of study of that. We knew how to transmit a dead portion of vac uh, virus to our body. We just did it in a new way. Mm -hmm. But that new way is 10 years old and been tested in other forms, like against sickle cell and other things. So it's not like we didn't know how to do this. It isn't eight months of it's 10 years and eight months. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So it's just the first like large scale production system of it. So, yeah, yeah. It's just, it's the first time we heard about it because we don't pay attention to science, but then suddenly we're like, Hey, we got a vaccine we need you to take. And we're like, first I'm hearing of it. And you know, the scientists are like, bitch, Barack Obama authorized this 10 years ago. <laughs> like, we started this 10 years ago. Well, I don't know. It's new to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
And so, you know, reality is, is, is a weird mistress mm-hmm. and, and, and people seem to sometimes yeah. be a lot less willing to accept it. But yet the, all of this makes conversation, right? It does. Like if we all agreed on everything, what would we talk about two hours a week? Uh, probably beating our dicks. Yeah. I like ice cream. I can't eat ice cream. Disagreement, disagreement, disagreement. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, realistically, yeah. Right. So I don't know. So uh, Disney is a bunch of pedophiles. Well, I mean, wow! Did I say that in an inflammatory way? People are charging Disney with being pedophiles and indoctrinating your children into woke culture. But this is the new thing. Everybody's a pedophile. Uh, uh, to the right, everybody wants to indoctrinate you into a woke culture that they are battling. Even in Ukraine right now, it's a culture war. Meanwhile, they've got Matt Gates, who's an actual pedophile. Right. Yelling at Lloyd Austin because he doesn't know how to run the fucking armed forces. Who the fuck are you, you frat paddle? Seriously. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry. I mean, you might not know everything and you might have a good point, but that doesn't mean you get to yell and pretend like you're the smartest person in the room when you know 10% of the situation, you know? It's like, you know, we were actually having that conversation, I want to say yesterday, where, you know, you know, Will Smith is banned from, you know, the Academy and all this <laughs> other stuff, but like, like people right. like Harvey Weinstein and Woody Allen or yeah, Woody Allen are perfectly yeah. acceptable despite the fact that you know they've abused countless people. It's right. people don't give a shit as long as it's their people, and that's the reality of it. Roman Polanski is shunned from America entirely for doing it. Yeah. So like yeah. if 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 the right or the left actually cared about it, they would actually right. do something about, you know, the people in their groups. But instead, no, mm-hmm. they'll they allow them to have voices because of X, Y, and Z reason. Insert your bullshit here. So I don't yeah. give a shit. Like you can sit down and, and tell me how you're, you know, battling the woke pedophile culture, but until you get rid of people like fucking Matt Gates, right? Or, you know, or the, Madison Cawthorn, or you know, you know, the entire state of Tennessee where they have whatever this fucking super marriage is that allows kids at the age of ten to get fucking married. I don't even know what the fuck that's about. Yeah, I saw that. That's like. Tennessee is just as hardcore as Texas and Florida, but getting a lot less attention. And I want to say, I'm sorry, but there a hurricane went through an area there. And I said, you can give them funding, Joe Biden, but ask them to promise to not take away people's rights during that time. And everybody was like, you're gross. And I was like, no, I know Tennessee. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. And, and here we are. They're doing exactly what we paid them to do because if we hadn't given them the money to rebuild they would have had to use that money that they had to rebuild but now they get to use it as propaganda and bullshit and make shitty laws because we paid them to do something else you know i don't i don't know if people see it the way i see it it but it's it's so gross you can marry a child unless you're gay like you can't say the word gay but you can marry a child and somehow that's not like weird and pedophilic because, well, right. it's super marriage. Yeah, that is very pedophilic now that I think about it. It's the definition, isn't it? Pretty much. Republican state? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Maybe the pedophiles were the ones that you, you invited along the way. <laughs> Maybe the Democrats See, weren't the pedophiles. It was the ones that you found out making these weird fucking pedophile laws on the, along the way that allow you to marry a kid. I just, I got nothing. And and that's the thing is like, I've, I've sent, you know, I've sent that to a couple of people and they're like, please tell me this is a joke. And I'm like, do I look like I'm laughing? Do I look like I am telling a fucking joke here? It's like, it's the truth. And that's, that's the sad part. And, and that's the crazy part is that the fucking writer of the bill acknowledged it. And I'm like, are you going to fucking fix it? But also too, like super marriage. Are you fucking kidding me? Like what the fuck? Who gets to define marriage? Super marriage I'll ask is that every, super I'll marriage get every month. Super marriage is definitely for people who are sigma males that uh, uh-huh. also um, believe in radical monogamy. I was just gonna say that you know, join me in radical monogamy, 
and let's have a super marriage. Oh, fucking Christ. Weird. It, fucking weird. It's so insane. It really is absolutely insane. So on military bases, right, it's a close-knit community, and couples get together, and they're in their barracks, and they have fun, but then men go to war, and some die, and some come back, and the ones that come back are charged with taking care of the wives, the widows, you know what I mean? And in that, uh, polyamory began, like open swingers. You know, they became swingers. So it's really the Republicans that have developed this sort of swinger mentality that, that Madison Cawthorn was talking about. You know what I Which mean? Which apparently and didn't it, even fucking happen. <laughs> polygamy. Polygamy. I think polygamy. that's the word I was looking well, for. It, yeah. So, I mean. Well, it's not polygamy if you're not committed to more than one person. But if you're sleeping with four people, but you only have one wife, it's an open relationship. Which isn't bad if we all agree. If you agree with if everyone involved agrees to it you know what i mean i, mean, I mean, it's fine it's fine consent is always but don't deny good. it don't deny it don't be like uh uh i stand up for this and and the radical of, monogamy alone but I by the way in the sanctity yeah. of marriage oh by the way i asked my right. mistress to have an abortion because i can't right. have my wife knowing that i'm fucking you know raw dogging this side chick exactly and we had our first uh forced abortion in texas um, the girl's being charged with murder because she self-induced an abortion. And I want to look into that more, but that we knew that was going to happen. We knew that was going to come. And uh, I respect the person that's going through it. That sucks. Really sucks. Well, and, and that's where people are. People are leaving, you know, the States, you know, Florida yeah. and Texas and places that are coming up with laws like this. How do you criminalize? parenthood how do you criminalize like pregnancy basically because you you believe that you know the way that i the way that i see it is is that you believe that it is your job to enforce christian morals upon a mass population rather than uh i don't know separating church and state like it was well, mutual to- responsibility right we're holding these women accountable for nine months, but the men get to go do whatever they want. You know, mm-hmm. where's the male accountability in all this? Where's the male contraceptives that, you know, being forced on them. If women aren't allowed to have children, if they're not allowed to have sex without being with an out involving pregnancy, why are men being allowed just to shoot sperm wherever they want, whenever they want? Grand question. Yeah, it is. It's because men are in control of everything, and men fear that when women have control, our balls will be filled with gel that prevents us from procreating. I'm trying to figure out where this sounds like a bad decision, personally. <laughs> it should be everybody. It should be everybody involved, right? So, right? Yeah. Like, if there's a pregnancy, the person, unless it's a rape or incest or forced sexual activity, but if it was mutual secu- sexual activity, the people involved are in consultation with medical and maybe religious and maybe parental people that and that make the decision. But there's no reason that like a guy, a governor from Texas should step into that conversation and say, no, you know, it's not his place. It's just not his place to say. Mm-hmm. Right. So. Okay. Yep. And, 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 you know, this is another one of those cases where, you know, the government thinks, you know, conservative government sits there and goes, well, we're not in favor of government intervention, but, and then, and then the, but (laughs) you end up getting like 9,000 different laws on how the government is going to intervene because, you know, they're going to use their religious book in order to justify their (laughs) intervention in a country where we're supposed to have separation of Right. Religion. Hold up your cross, cross your legs, and burn that book. <sighs> burn that book. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, so how do you record drums? Do you still drum? Do you have a drum set? What's I have a drum set. I have not drum. I have not done much drumming in a while. I had this great plan to, you know, set my drums up in the garage, and uh, then we ended up having to open up the shop, and so my drums are still just in the garage scattered out so at some point okay. they'll get set up but you there's a you the way that you record drums i mean you know, you have to have a mixer and you have to mic up each drum okay and then for the cymbals you actually have areas you have area mics that are over the top of them i like that so you end up having like what eight inputs 
Something like that. Depends. Do you need like a 16 track? Pretty much, yeah. Wow. Okay. I'm just curious. So I took my I took my own advice, by the way, and I went into GarageBand and I found a simple snap track. And then I found a simple guitar strum, like a halted guitar strum. And I just started yelling into it and singing into it. You know what I mean? And putting little effects on it, deleting it, changing it, getting different lyrics, trying to sing them. You know, it's mm-hmm. it's cool. Like, I don't know how to explain it, but now I'm, I have my darkest hour by Megadeth and I'm like, wow, I actually like have four tracks. They're not, they don't sound great, but it is what I intended it to be. But now I kind of want to replace the guitar and drum tracks. You know what I mean? With something. So that's fair, but it's a project. It's a project and it makes me Jeffrey. I have never been the greatest singer on the planet, but I love to sing, you know, and I have a growl. I can get better range with my growl than I can without it. So I have a, I think I have a really unique voice and I like songs that I make. Nice. Well, that's, I mean, you know? hopefully you like the songs that you make. Otherwise you're mm-hmm. fallout boy. Right. Well, it's the thing is, is oftentimes what I see, I hear in my head and what I make is exactly the same. Now, whether that's any good is a different thing, whether that's produced well is a different thing, but it is always exactly what I hear in my head, you know? Mm-hmm. And that's it. So I was going to, and I have it. I was going to send it to Adam. Hi, Adam. And, and see if he wanted to throw some guitar on it. Cause I have garage band and I can just share the project with him. And then there's no lag in uh, files and everything. So there you go. But then he'll judge my singing and he actually judges bands. Like he promotes and works with bands. So, mm-hmm. you know, no, he's know. a good one. Yeah. I'm is. actually, and I, I'm actually I looking love his at guitaring. I'm actually looking at getting a new guitar. Yeah. Yep. I want to okay. get I want to get a seven string so that way I can start. You know, I want to start Shit. doing some more of my stuff and uh, writing yeah? some more of my metal again because uh, I have a bunch of ideas that I've been penning out for a while and I want to like this summer I want to get my amp back and um, and get that in here so I can start working on stuff again and fuck yeah I I love I love I love playing guitar like I, I really do I also love drumming. I just I loved I loved writing music in general, and so I really want to get in and and really just like get back to spending time playing guitar and and working on my cool. my my skills. Because I mean, I love it. There Send there were definitely tracks. there were definitely things where like I sweet picking was never my thing. I could never get it right, you know, when I was playing regularly. And you know, it would be nice to actually learn how to do it properly and and <laughs> and be able to do it. Because it's not that I want to do a bunch of sweet picking, but I want to be able to, you know, use it to you know make certain highlights in my music. But I was, I mean, I was always more of a rhythm guitarist than I was a lead guitarist. And, mm. and so it's just, you know, I'm just bad at guitar. I don't have the wrists to do it. Like I can't hold the guitar properly to do the notes the way I want to. So I just, I always have a guitar and I always take courses. There's one right over here, you know, and I always like it, but then I meet a kid and he's like, I always wanted to learn guitar. And I'm like, then take the guitar. And then I go buy another $49 guitar. You know, it sits in my room until I meet another kid that wants to learn how to play guitar. Right. Yeah. But I like that. And yeah, I always, I don't know. I always wanted tracks to sing to, cause I don't know. I I'm a singer. I mean, I, and the thing is, is like, the tempo I have is way off at darkest hour. And I always called that rotten teeth because the way I hear it in my head based on a beat might sound totally different. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so, and I always like that. Like, I don't know. There's a different rhythm in my head for songs than it is. And so I like that. I call it rotten teeth thing. Sing, singing a song in such a way to where it just, it's really bad. And I did that with war pigs, mm. uh, black Sabbath. And people were like, what the fuck? fuck is that that is horrible and then all of a sudden i started getting people going that's actually kind of cool and then it was like damn how do you do that like how do you not get the original song in your head when you're singing it you know and for me i did a sod song um kill yourself and i sang it exact like without any changes just how they did it and people were like that's fucking incredible. And to me, that was so hard to do. Cause I don't hear the song the way people do, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. 
So that was a bigger thing to me, the talent. But I love butchering songs. I did it with uh, Lincoln <laughs> Park. You know what I mean? I did it with uh, Snoop Dogg, Lottie Dottie. I, there's a part where I sing the lyrics and it's the N word. And there's just somebody commented, no. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, I imagined, um, fuck, Johnny Cash singing la di and that's what it is and it's like four and a half minutes and it's just awesome to me it just makes me laugh every time i hear it it's my most popular song but i love singing you know i don't know how i got on that i don't have much more in my note and i wanted to find out more about recording drums and stuff mm. yeah Any, uh, so let's talk about oil painting how about that or oh. is it water <laughs> Watercol- watercolors or oil painting? I, let's not talk about painting because I know jack shit about it. Public access America. It's always funny because, like, you know, especially because as you know, libertarians, we get a ton of shit, even amongst other libertarians. We're- I think political philosophy is a lot like religion, and where there's moments you have to go on faith and trust what somebody else is saying. The main, the main focus is it's like less dependence on the government because, well. We've seen how that's gone. And you don't have to do that if you think about it in a human way. You know, more dependence on connections with each other. But you can always bring it back to what would one human do for another? What would a hundred do for a hundred? People, people looking out for people. Find Public Access America anywhere you find your favorite podcast every Sunday and Thursday. And join the chat on YouTube at Public Access America every Sunday, noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. Communities looking out for community. Public Access America. History in the making making history in the making in the making in the making in the making oh no 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 i i'm sorry i have this question that went along with this disney thing right Mm -hmm. so um i don't know what her name is i'm gonna call her her name was abigail and she's a relative of disney and Mm. her her question was you you believe that Disney is indoctrin- indoctrinating your children into the gay the gay society, which there isn't. But so if there was no mention of gay, would people not be gay, or are people just gay? And I think that's a great question to sum up on. You know what I mean? Hmm. Question of whether or not people are if a gay, if a gay just... didn't fall in the forest, would people not turn gay? <laughs> no well you know the number one creator of gay kids is straight people so i have to go with it's time to ban the straights well it's kind of like somebody waves a rainbow at a kid and a kid is suddenly enthralled with gayhood like they have no choice like a vampire you know what i mean i i I, as a gamer all i can sit down and say is what the fuck makes you think that you know some kid wants to choose to play life on hard mode right yeah because you know everybody's going to be asking them well how do you know that you're gay <laughs> when, when was the when was the oh first God. time that you realized that you were gay? when the motherfucker when was the first time you realized you were straight right then and a lot of kids like my nieces and nephews they're like what are you talking about like they don't even understand the question are you gay or straight they don't get it i'm just me like I'm just me and I am what I choose to be when I wake up and tough shit. If you don't agree with that, like they don't even ask permission, you know, there's some things you don't even get to choose period in the story. Right. So, right. You know, but I am who I am when I wake up that day and it's not up to you to choose what that is, you know? Right. And I think that's awesome. So I think, yes, people would be gay if there wasn't the woke vampire waving a rainbow and 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 hypnotizing kids. But I think that's what uh, Republicans are making this out to sound like, like gay people are vampires that can hypnotize your children into also being gay. And that's not how it works at all. Historically historically (laughs) speaking, there are several accounts of, you know, politicians and royalty of all sorts being gay like this is sure. like g- going back to antiquity like this uh-huh. is not something that's like surprise the gay has just popped up in the last 50 years <laughs> right it's become more prevalent simply because you know as the ability to spread information has gotten easier right you there's even You're people forced, that are gay you, that it, don't talk about it. Mm-hmm. You know? I'd, yeah. I've I've actually known a few of people like that where yeah. it's like 
they they have boyfriends or girlfriends but they don't even really say anything about it like there was right. one that i knew there was one that i knew that he was a conservative gay man and i'm going how is that right how <laughs> like the how you, like i like, can believe you can believe in fiscal responsibility and conservation of our land and gay rights. And that's pretty much what it boiled down. It was like, you know, it was like, I can, you know, I believe in being fiscally responsible, keeping the government out of, you know, things that they don't need to be a part of and also being gay. And I'm like, you know what? That's actually fair. Like, okay. It is, but that. you can't vote. You can't then vote for anybody that will represent your values. You know what I mean? Right now. Well, unless you go no libertarian. Maybe, but then you're throwing your vote away, like you're voting for the Green Party. You know what I mean? Like, there's at no this point. Are we? No openly... Are we really? Are we? At this point, here's my question: Is is that are we? <laughs> are we throwing our votes away on parties that don't represent us currently? Yes. Yes. So that's. I mean, yes. that's your real question. It's like, you know, you, you spend. You <laughs> Does spend, anybody really represent you <laughs> within the party within one of the two major parties that you vote for? Do you, do they actually right. represent you anymore? Because it's clear that you know they neither of them represent me they don't give a fuck about me you know every hour we we ask a question um legislating is governing politics is the corruption of that who represents you in congress and every once in a while we get this answer fucking nobody yeah. <laughs> Real and that's why i post it because i want to hear the answers but the main thing was because there's a link attached to it for Balotopia, which will lead you to a map so you can click your area and it'll show you who represents you. And then you can decide whether they represent you or if the uh, uh, opposition represents you better or if you need to run yourself because you represent your committee, your community better than either one. Right. You know, that was the whole purpose of that. But we just get these people like, fuck you. I believe in governing ourselves. You know. <laughs> And, and it's so cool. This guy was like, we, we should govern ourselves. And I was like, yeah, but if you have a neighbor, suddenly you have politics. That's how it works. You know I mean, what quite, I mean? I mean, pretty much. And that's, and, and I think that's where, you know, it's, it's such a shit yeah. show. It is such a yeah, shit but show. I love the, I love the question because it's the same thing. I asked Joe Biden, Joe Biden said he wanted to make a cabinet that looks like America. And I keep asking him, well, who's the disabled person? And I just want him to say me, me, I stutter, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but he won't. And I just recently learned that Katie Porter identifies as disabled. And I, I like Katie Porter a lot. Like she's cool. So, and then, I mean, and unfortunately, you've also got Madison Cawthorn, right? But he's not, he does he is he? He's in a wheelchair, dude. Madison is, yeah. What What the fuck did I miss? Wow, yeah. He's, also, he's, good for you, Jason, for not judging somebody based on their wow, okay, yeah. Well, I'm blind, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> Madison Cawthorn's in a wheelchair. Um, so okay, I mean, you know, it's. He, like there are people with disabilities and, and uh, that are in there now, whether or not they're represented this, you know, in people, the cabinet, yeah, I don't whether care. or not they're actually representing the, is the interests of people who are disabled is a whole entirely exactly. different question because, you know, Bravo. Cause, Bravo. Be because realistically, like all of the, all of the politicians that are disabled could come together and come up with, you know, any number of Marcus. different any number of different things yeah uh, could you imagine a bipartisan caucus for people with disabilities yes. for well there's a black caucus why can't there be a dis disability caucus right and so you know Fuck. there you go oh, i love that so you know because i guarantee you that there are issues affecting madison cawthorn that he probably yeah. hasn't thought about or you know that affect tammy duckworth yep exactly so yeah. any number of there are any number of different things that you can absolutely look at and you could probably find commonality now whether or not you right. would actually whether or not they would actually agree with each other is a whole nother issue but <laughs> you would think that this party the, you know the, the people that have a specific interest that, that affects them would be able to come together and go you know what how do we legislate for other people affected like us right. and you could probably find some great compromises in those realms too and the truth is, is if there's a radical outlier in the system, it's better to bring them in and make them a part of the process other than it is to isolate them like a Marjorie Taylor Greene, you know, to put her, to bring her into a group of people that might have some reasoning capabilities, like in a bipartisan way, 
might have benefited her to where isolation just made her even more radical. I don't, I, the problem was, is that Marjorie Taylor Greene was always seeking, you know, always attention seeking. She was never, it was never about actually getting anything done. It was always attention seeking. It's kind of like Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz is right. literally just like, like, you know, he makes these big fucking arguments and then immediately turns to his phone and starts looking for his name on Twitter to see if he gets to jerk right. off to himself later today. But he doesn't even legislate above a sixth grade level. You know what I mean? <laughs> and that's, and, I, and, and that's the problem with a lot of the politicians is like they get up, they make their cheerleader political speech. Then they start looking to see if somebody owned the libs or owned the conservatives. Yeah. And that way they can, you know, have something to think about while they beat themselves at night. That's funny. Meanwhile, I'm over here commenting to uh, Pramila Jayapal. No, you do it. That's your job. <laughs> you know, like, she's like, Raise your hand if you believe we should lower pharma prices. And I'm like, no, we shouldn't. You should. We elected you to do it. You do it. You do it. <laughs> so they don't understand. Just like Elizabeth Warren, you can yell at me all, all day long that you know the issues. The problem is, is you're in the body created to fix them and you haven't. So by telling me the problem, you're telling me what you haven't fixed, what you job you haven't done yet. You know, exactly. Tom Cotton, fuck you. You can complain about these problems, but the truth is, is you're not fixing them. Fuck you. You know, <laughs> exactly. And that's, and that's, I think one of the biggest issues that we have at hand is, is that you have a bunch of people who are willing to bitch about the problem, but you know, they're the ones that are the, they're the ones in power to actually fix it. And they're right. not doing it. Damn. campfire campfire put it out well you have the bucket of water put it out no you have the water <laughs> bring the bucket over here they're we like all and they're holding that on to you it like, would no. get the water <laughs> we all paid you a dollar to go get the water you have the water you put it out no we need to put it out it's it's ridiculous you know mm -hmm. and it isn't it isn't like the, it isn't right or left it's like mm -hmm politicians and influential and corporate and celebrity against like the 99% of us left. <laughs> right. <laughs> and it doesn't matter if that 99% is Muslim or Asian or black or white or poor or disabled or horm homeless or talented. We are, we need to come together and have an understanding that, that we we elect the people to fix things mm -hmm. and we don't elect people to acknowledge the problems yeah we can do we can do that yeah, they need we're, we've already it. acknowledged the problem step one step two <laughs> fucking yeah. fix it right just fix it stop telling me what you see it <laughs> tell me you fixed it right stop telling me what bill back better might do tell me what the bill passed that you passed will do you know right so Fuck. Fun time. I love it, Jeffrey. Fun Damn it. Times. We weren't going to go political. I'm sorry, Ukraine. We, you're still top of mind to me. There, I think they're, they, somebody said they're worried that we will become apathetic. And my only issue is how, how does Europe still buy natural gas and oil from Russia? Well, they're, you know what I mean? That's... And have any moral equivalency in this battle. And Boris Johnson going into Ukraine, going into Kiev to meet with Vladimir Zelensky, rock star move. Those yeah, that was that was that was that was a balls of steel move. And yes. and I think the answer is 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 that you know what. I think what I'm seeing Europe doing, like the UK is going to build 12 new nuclear power plants. They're going to build one a year. And, okay. I, and, and we are shipping natural gas to them like yep. crazy right and now. That's, also because China used to take it and now they're taking it from Russia, I heard. So I, now we they're have. They're not even doing that. So surprisingly, no? they're, they have not really upped their consumption of Russian energy despite being offered uh, deep discounts on it. So, wow, okay. Good for you, China. Yeah, that's, I wouldn't hold out hope on that. I think, I think well, I don't like China, but they're better than somebody that rapes and fucking war crimes is well, their way through a foreign country. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I wouldn't necessarily hold your breath on that one either. They, they well, do they're that raping in their own and war crime. Yeah. In their own country. So and that's disgusting right now. And it should be said that like people are like in Singapore are like 
almost dying because they've been on lockdown for so long while the rest of the world got infected by COVID and has moved on. But China has not, you know? Well, it's Singapore. So that's, you know, that's Philippines, but Beijing, like all the- Wait, made- the Singapore isn't the Philippines, is it? I thought Singapore was, or it's not the Philippines or Indonesia. Like, or okay. wait, Singapore, I think Singapore is its own, if I remember right. Okay. Loosely like Hong Kong or totally like Taiwan? No, like, uh, I actually don't. Uh, I think I they're a city Sorry. state, technically. Um, Why did I bring Singapore up when neither of us know anything about it <laughs> at the end of the show? No, but, but like, but like, you know, uh, Beijing and, uh, you know, Shenzhen, Shenzhen and, and there's a right. bunch of different cities that are, you know, they've got Omicron that's just ripping through the country at this point. Yeah, because, because it travels so fast. It's It's, you know, and they haven't had a better vaccine available to them. Right. So, yeah, you know, at some point, you know, your metric, you know, like everywhere else that has had strict lockdowns uh, in the wave of Omicron, you know, Uh it hasn't worked. Whereas, you know, we pushed vaccines very heavily. And, you know, yes, we saw a stupid dramatic rise in Omicron, but it wasn't as (laughs) high as, or it was higher than what we saw the year prior, you know, uh, but. Uh huh. It worked out in a way where, you know, now, you know, our cases aren't really rising. They're, right. we've and kind hospitalizations of are down. Yeah, right? they've plateaued. Plus, we've got more tools available. So, so they've flattened. We've, have we flattened the curve, Dan? Have we flattened the curve? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, preliminarily, I would say yes, we yeah. actually have. Like, that's kind of staying pretty stable. Like, I'm, a, I'm yeah. honestly expecting that there might be a slight rise. Uh, COVID might have its season, right? Yeah, like ten it, years from now, COVID might have its spring season. Like, like COVID will have like a like there will be. I'm gonna like I would imagine that there's gonna be like a ramp up through you know September, you know October into yeah. you know peak flu season like we were always used to, and then it just dies down. And there's always yep. cases, but it's not you know super strong and. I've had people that have been like, oh my God, Nancy Pelosi got COVID and everybody's freaking out. And then when you read the article, right? When you read the article about Pelosi, she has COVID, but she's asymptomatic. I'm like, vaccination. Or, you know, if she had symptomatic COVID and they gave her Paxlovid and she was fine, you know, then. Yep. Yep. Like at some point, like this, this is where the trust the science crew now needs to trust Uh the science like we have all of these tools that scientifically we're showing that they work and they're effective and it's you know we've got multiple tools for this toolbox so now it's time to actually trust the science and i would say that trump held donald trump held super spreader events before we had a vaccination during the the most lethal portion of the of the virus um joe biden had it his super spreader during all the precautions so we have it's a different era in which this happened like we thought we Mm -hmm. had the cures and preventions and everything 53 people got it but like you said none of them are in the hospitals a lot of them are asymptomatic a lot of them are non-infectious right now at this point yep like six days later and that's that's the vaccine there's no comparison between donald trump spreading it before the virus, you know, before the vaccines, before there was these pills, before there was these precautions. antibodies, and uh, yeah, there, there, yeah. there, there is very little comparison. And it, realistically, it's like you know, the pandemic's not over. Well, I mean, if we're going to go by that, right. if we're going to go by that metric, you know, the flu pandemic's not over either. Right. Somebody said that the pandemic is still going. And I was like, no, only for those that are immune competent, that are compromised for the rest of us, it's an endemic that we can cure, that we can prevent. You yeah, know? We, we can prevent. And if we, you know, that we can right. prevent on a large scale or treat on a right. large but scale. But it's like, it's like poverty isn't a pandemic, right? It's an endemic. It's something that we can solve. <laughs> we just choose not to. Uh, and then, and then on top of that, it's like, we are getting even more options. Available. Like, like there's going to be a nasal spray vaccine yeah. that's coming out for people who can't do the injections and fucking awesome like, isn't it there's there's so many different options that's that america are- right that's america we're gonna put the fucking uh the antidote on stamps so when you send mail you're just gonna be cured <laughs> no no i wish sorry. 
No, I wish. But it, well, there's going to be so many ways. There's, yep. It's that's what America does. It's amazing. That's what we do. Yeah, that's what we've always done. And there was a really bad time in this of COVID. Like there was a time a lot of people were dying, and I was really scared. And it was lethal, and people were going to the hospital, and they were on ventilators. So I'm not going to ever say that that didn't happen. No, oh, it happened. You know? It was real, and yeah. it was real. But we got through it together, Jeffrey. You and I. We did. And guess what? we now we've come out the other side with even more tools to where it shouldn't look yeah. like this. We have widespread availability of pills. So it shouldn't look like that. We have widespread right. availability of monoclonal antibodies. So it shouldn't oh, look yeah. like that. You know, the reality is that like, if I did the math correctly, like, like I talked on Dan's show, there should be like a point zero zero one eight percent that you end up hospitalized and or dead. Right. Because we have a bunch of rational people that are like, oh, I tested positive for COVID. I'm going to stay home today, boss. Yes, please stay home. Work from home. Here's your computer. You're doing great. Go, right? get, tested yeah, at doing Wal- great. go get tested at Walgreens or Rite Aid <laughs> yep. or whatever and get your Paxlovid. And, yep. you know, just having a game plan for, you know, if if that doesn't work out the way that you need it to, there's also monoclonal antibodies. So right. there's, there's several it. that's, different that's, treatments. That's, that's where we're going to get those policies that Dan talked about. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? The cooperation of departments. And mm-hmm. He sees like this division, like nobody's going to get it done because everybody's going to pass the buck. But I see everybody having a say mm-hmm. and coming up with something reasonable. Companies will do that. Mm-hmm. Like they normalize their policies. If Amazon does it, then um, somebody else, will, UPS will do it. FedEx mm-hmm. will do it and it'll trickle down. Especially, you know? and especially when they see that they, they end up losing very minimal productivity. Those right. kind of things just get integrated. Yeah. All right. Well, I appreciate you, Jeffrey. You go enjoy your day. I'll Give everybody it. a hug. Um, sorry we couldn't talk about water or oil-based paint this week. We just didn't have an informed voice or expert to do it. Nope. Thank you for listening to Public Access America. Maybe next week we will bring you the content that you want. This week we just did this. Bye. To those who would tear the world down, we will defeat you. This is our moment. This is our time. To those who seek peace and security, we support you. Yes, we can. And to all those who have wondered if America's beacon still burns as bright, tonight we prove once more that the true strength of our nation comes not from the might of our arms or the scale of our wealth, but from the enduring power. Stitcher Smart Stitcher Radio, Smart app, Radio, Radio app, Public, Radio and, and Spotify. Yes, we can. Public Access Public America. Access history America. in the making. Making history in the making. around us is smart we think your education should be smart too with the FlexPath learning format from capella university you can set your own deadlines and leverage your experience to move forward at your pace visit capella.edu to learn more capella university don't just learn learn smarter